This lecture will be about nuclear radiation and decay. This will basically be an intro to the idea along with some vocabulary. So nuclear radiation and decay occur in unstable nuclei, which is where the strong nuclear force does not create enough binding energy to permanently hold the nucleus of an atom together. The nucleus will eventually break apart and lose some mass and or energy and become more stable as a result. This graph shows the general relationship between the number of protons P, the number of neutrons N, and the stability of a nucleus. The farther a nucleus is from the line of stability, Ability, the more unstable it is. So I'll start with this purple line that represents where the number of neutrons is equal to the number of protons. So this red line here shows in general where the most stable atoms appear. So you can see it's not always the case that the most stable atoms have an equal number of protons and neutrons. After a certain number of protons to remain stable, atoms actually have to have larger and larger amounts of neutrons compared to protons. So that's what that upward curve of the graph represents. What that means is that beyond a certain number of protons, you need a greater number of neutrons than protons to have a stable nucleus. So the farther a nucleus is from this line of stability, the less stable it is. As an example, carbon-12 is stable because it has the same number of protons and neutrons. You can see it has six protons, and because its atomic mass is 12, that means it must have six neutrons to add together with the protons to make 12. So at the lower end of that graph, atoms are the most stable when they have an equal number of protons and neutrons. So carbon-12 is more stable than other isotopes of carbon, like carbon-14. You can see that carbon-14 has the same number of protons as carbon-12, but it has more neutrons. It has eight neutrons instead of six, and so it appears higher on the graph, and so it's farther away from the line of stability, and so we know it's less stable than carbon-12. Carbon has a small enough number of protons where it's most stable where the protons and neutrons are equal to each other. We can compare this to something like uranium with 92 protons, the most stable isotope of uranium is 238, which means it has 146 neutrons and only 92 protons. And you can see if we decrease the number of neutrons, if we go down the y-axis to uranium-235, that's actually less stable than uranium-238 because it's farther away from the line of stability. So uranium-238 has so many protons that actually bringing the protons and neutrons closer together actually makes it less stable. That's the general relationship between the number of protons, neutrons, and how stable the isotope is. These are more vocab words I need you to know. When an unstable nucleus loses matter and or energy, we call the matter or energy it lost radiation. Radioactive decay is the name for the process of an atom losing mass and or energy. And we call the atom or material left over after decay the daughter of the initial atom. As an example, you can see I have a nuclear equation here where uranium is decaying into thorium and emitting a helium atom. So this whole process is called radioactive decay, the particle emitted is called radiation, and the part that's left over is called the daughter. As a rule, nuclear radiation always makes a nucleus more stable than it was before radiation happened. Finally, we call a substance radioactive if its atoms are unstable and give off radiation. As an example, if this uranium atom undergoes decay, it's going to lose two protons and two neutrons. And if you think about it, if the number of protons and neutrons that it loses are equal to each other, it's going to move parallel to that purple line because that's where the protons and neutrons are equal to each other. So when it becomes thorium, you can see it's now closer to the line of stability than it was before. So that fits the rule that says nuclear radiation always makes a nucleus more stable than it was before. Another term you'll need to know is ionizing power. This is the ability of radiation to strip other atoms of electrons when it interacts with them. The more ionizing power radiation has, the more damage it can do to materials. Radiation with high ionizing power is especially dangerous to humans because it can damage our DNA molecules. Because DNA contains instructions for what our cells do, this ionization of DNA can lead to cancer and other problems. So this is the reason nuclear radiation is dangerous to humans. These are two important and, to me, extremely strange and mysterious parts of radiation. We say that radiation is random and spontaneous. It's random because it cannot be predicted which nucleus will decay, and it's spontaneous because it cannot be predicted when a nucleus will decay. And when I say random, I mean really fundamentally random. Even more random than something like rolling dice. The numbers that dice land on are random to humans, but not really random to the universe. Because if we imagine rewinding the universe and rolling the dice in the exact same way, with the exact same force at the exact same angle, we would imagine that they would land on the exact same number. But radiation is actually fundamentally random in a way that that's not. Because if we were to observe over time which atom decays, 
And then if we found a way to rewind the entire universe and reset all other conditions of the universe to be exactly the same, and started observing from the exact same situation that all matter in the universe was in before, we would actually find that it would be possible for a different atom to decay. So there's nothing written into the universe at all about which atom will decay. Similarly, it can't be predicted when a nucleus will decay. If we started this clock, it could decay very early. But if we rewound the universe and started all over again, it could decay much later or not at all. So that's your introduction to nuclear radiation and decay.